An anonymous individual writing from the Middle East in Jordan has asked this question. Does deliverance come under the gift of miracles in 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Let's talk for a moment about those nine gifts of the Spirit. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, the working of miracles, prophecy, the discerning of spirits, tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. My feeling is that in an effort to dispensationalize, many theologians have sort of dumbed down the work of the Holy Spirit and have not made these precious gifts that are necessary in the deliverance process available. Miracles? Well, of course. That's spectacular. We all like hearing about miracles and hope to see one. Obviously, the greatest miracle is the soul transformed by the gospel. But then, of course, there are second, third, and fourth stage miracles that move on into the reality of the physical world in which we live and the changing of matter and working in extra dimensions beyond those in which we exist. But when I minister deliverance and healing, the gifts that I truly rely upon the most are these. First of all, wisdom and then knowledge. Now I'm not talking about smarts, learning, education, and experience, though all of that plays a very important role in the deliverance process. I'm talking about supernatural wisdom, supernatural knowledge. Many times I've been involved in the deliverance and we've been stuck, and I didn't know what to do and where to go with the situation. And then the Holy Spirit put into my mind the knowledge of what I needed to do. It didn't come from my past experience. In many cases, it wasn't even something I was thinking about. It was nowhere near the paradigm in which I was working. But from outside of the reality of what I was involved with, the Holy Spirit gave me a word, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge or information that made all the difference. It's also very important to know the discerning of spirits. Now, if you look at most Bible commentators, they will say that gift is about knowing people's hearts, knowing people's spiritual condition, being aware of someone's spirituality. I believe it means what it says. The discerning of spirits. Evil spirits. Knowing when they're present. Knowing what they're doing and knowing how to defeat them and understanding what their strategy is. Now most of the time, when I'm doing an exorcism, I operate on the basis of the command of Christ, the experience which He has given me, and the grace and the work of the Holy Spirit. But there are those times when I discern something. Many is the time I've looked at a person without any apparent indication that they're demonized, and I say to them, you have a demon. How do I know that? The Lord shows me. You may have been present in one of our seminars where I walk around the room provoking the devil and drawing out the people who are demonized. Sometimes I'm actually amazed the way that the Holy Spirit shows me who the person is that needs ministry. That individual, the God is destined for freedom at that particular time. That's supernatural. So, in ministering freedom from the bondage of Satan, wisdom, knowledge, and the discerning of spirits is very important. And all of that is a miracle. Yes, the deliverance and individual experiences when an evil spirit is expelled is truly a miracle. In our international school of exorcism, we go into church history a great deal. So the people who minister deliverance have a solid foundation. And one of the things we teach, quoting from early church fathers and current church historians, 
is that exorcism was categorized as a miracle in the early centuries of the church. In fact, some writers suggest it was the most significant miracle to validate the reality of the gospel. In the absence of the physical presence of Christ, his power to set people free from the demonic forces that bound them was considered an ultimate indication of his power and presence. So, I hope that answers your question about the gifts of the Spirit and its relationship in 1 Corinthians 12 to the ministry of deliverance. And remember, in setting people free, it is a miracle. Not to be compared with the miracle of salvation, but nonetheless, one of the clear indications that Christ is Lord and He is the Son of God. The most frequent demon that I deal with is the spirit of Jezebel, the most prevalent evil spirit of our age. This demon wants to destroy your health, your finances, your marriage, your family, and your church. Learn the tactics of Jezebel throughout history and in the time in which we live. My book, Jezebel, Defeating Your Number One Spiritual Enemy is your key to overcoming this demon which is more prevalent than at any time in human history. Get your copy today. Jezebel, Defeating Your Number One Spiritual Enemy. He took the curses away from me. Was he Papa Larson? Because he can help you. If your life isn't all that it should be, if relationships aren't working, if your health, your finances, or your spiritual life are unhappy, schedule a personal one-on-one -on -one encounter with me. We'll get to the root of the issues that are holding you back. We'll give you answers and a whole new direction in life. Oh, what a change, what a difference when you have an encounter with God. Take action. I look forward to seeing you soon. your support for this worldwide outreach to do what Jesus did. For the latest information on resources, seminars, conferences, training institutes, retreats, and international missions, go to boblarson.org. Thank you for your prayers and financial partnership.